Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the digital space and a big welcome and hello from us in drama. Now, before we get into your next lesson, let's just have a quick recap at some of the non-natural techniques that Brecht uses in order to distance his audience. So let me just get into roll. All sorts of techniques that you would have explored. Mr. Ralph walks across the stage and decides to slap a chicken. Don't know where that came from. And then we have this. It's that invisible barrier is broken. Then we also had this. The idea of using placards or signs for characters, locations, like time of day. And we had this. Actors playing more than one role within the play. Yeah, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. I'm not going to use the audio for this one. <laughs> Hit yourself in the face. Okay, so you get the idea. That's multi-rolling. Then we also had this idea. So he would often use songs live to the audience and often tell the story. They would help the story move forward through their lyrics. Mr. Ralph is teaching in a digital space. He knows that his students are a disgrace. No, you're not really. You're not really a disgrace. You're working really, really hard. Don't know where that lyric came from. So he wants to tell the story and it is through song. So hopefully you sit on your sofa and sing along. Okay, so that is a song. Then he also had this. And sometimes he would actually get the audience involved or give them costumes to wear to make a point. His plays often followed a fractured narrative, a non-linear structure. His plays were often in episodes, so the narrative jumps back and forth. So anyway, that was Brecht, but let's dive now into the next lesson. Your objective is to explore non-naturalistic drama and starting points for performance ideas. Often when we're creating performances, it all starts with just a brainstorm of ideas. So I want you to look at the image attached. It's a painting called The Persistence of Memory, and that's by an artist called Salvador Dali. And he belonged to a group of artists called the Surrealists. And the Surrealists was a, uh, a movement that became quite prominent during his lifetime. So let's go to Google. What is surreal? It's a Okay, fantastic. Right, well, let's just go from this. Sought to release the creative potential of the unconscious mind. Whoa, that's deep. Unconscious, what is going on in our heads without us even knowing? By well, the irrational juxtaposition of images. We know what juxtaposition means. It's a direct contrast between things on stage. I guess what that's saying is in Dali's work and in Surrealist work, there's always a contrast. Things that don't belong together. Let's have a look at that painting. So this is the persistence of memory and you can see that juxtaposition here like we've got clocks but the clocks are, are melting yet somehow they're still telling the time we've got this kind of weird pocket watch it's got ants crawling over it but it's in a really nice pattern of course we've got this really strange landscape with what looks like a piece of architecture in the corner where maybe a building has been started but not finished and this very very strange <laughs> looking figure that also is kind of melting. It could be a, a face, but it could mean anything. What we then want you to do, go and select one painting from Salvador Dali that interests you and choose carefully because there's quite a lot of very strange uh, paintings. So I'm going to find an image that I like. There was one that did catch my eye. Where's the loo roll? There it is. Okay, so this image uh, caught my eye. So we want you to create a mind map that explores the painting that you've chosen. But here's the catch. Try to think outside the box because it's surrealism. So we don't just want to see a load of writing. We want it to be as creative as possible. Think about storyline, characters, themes, time, location, questions you might have, anything you can think of really. And here's the beauty. Because surrealism is about the unconscious mind, the stuff that we don't realize we're thinking about, often the first thing that comes to your head, even if it's weird, write it down. You can write words, draw images, you can use objects or anything you can think of. Be as creative as possible. I'm gonna start here with a classic piece of paper. And this image caught my eye. This is titled The Surreal Simulacrum. I don't know what that means. Okay, The Surreal. However you want to do it, I've decided just to write down that title in there. So what can I see? I'm just going to use a separate piece of paper here to just write down some initial ideas. The first thing I see is a toilet roll. I see a record player. It's old. Self-portrait. What else is there? There's a skull. Looks like an animal. There's a really barren landscape. What time of day is it? It looks like it's a desert, but the sky is really, really blue. Hello. 
Hi darling, this is my daughter coming in. So maybe it's like quite high up in the atmosphere. Then we've actually got that self portrait, as I'm noticing it, it's coming out of like a drawer. Secrets, that's what that might mean. Um, oh my goodness, so I've just noticed there's a little boy actually, I don't know if you can see him in the corner here. There's a small boy with a, some kind of like hoop, isn't it? Um, and he's on his own. So that idea of being isolated. Oh my goodness, we're all isolated at the moment. So that for me links to quarantine, self-isolation. We're stuck in our gardens. What am I gonna do with my time? There's a few ideas there. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna go with that barren landscape idea because it looks quite deserted. So I'm just gonna go out into the garden and I'm gonna go and pick up some mud. I'm going to try and find something that represents that barren landscape. So I'm just going to grab some soil. Here we go. Gonna do it. Empty bucket. Oh, this looks quite good as well. Right, okay, so I've been outside. I've got a few items for my brainstorm. Let's start with that dirt. Perfect. Make a little annotation here. A barren landscape, I've annotated it. That contrast between a barren landscape and a deep sky blue. Now that actually blue, that's quite calming as well. Actually, if you look at that image, it's anything but calm. Uh, what else? Blue actually is also quite a sad color. There's this loo roll. This is like gold dust. I'm not gonna use this. In fact, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one sheet. Fabulous. This is a necessity. Hey Siri, how do I spell necessity? Thanks very much, always comes in handy. I'm gonna write the word rare in demand. Also picked up this. This is a flower and it looks a little bit dead, but also it kind of looks like that record player, doesn't it? It's actually, um, oh, I wonder if I could draw something on it. Probably need a little bit of color in there as well, I think, just to make that look prettier. My fish. This just popped into my mind, but I just imagined that that fish was saying, help me. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna draw a little speech bubble and I think that probably reflects this environment that we're in and all sorts of natural disasters happening. And our wildlife is one of those areas that does suffer for it. I can't look at him without helping. I'm gonna give him a little bit of water. There you go, fish. Oh, okay, so he's also coming out of a drawer. And I had the idea of people hiding things. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write the word shh. Okay, there we go. The word shh in green. Let's do one more. What questions do I have about this? Because of this whole idea that that boy is isolated on his own, um, I'm going to write a question. In fact, someone needs to be speaking the question. Right, I've got this dove. I think this for me represents that idea of freedom. I'm gonna put the dove facing downwards because, just my first thought, uh, his question is, what's that boy thinking? What is that boy thinking? Am I alone? That is what he's thinking. So there we have it. There is my brainstorm. I hope you can see that. And that is my unconscious representation of Dali's image. So that's your introduction to a different form of non-naturalistic drama and a starting point for performance. I hope you've enjoyed that lesson and I'll see you again soon.